Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Petar Chakarov on the line, and he's a sales and business manage, development manager at Healy Consultants Group, PLC. Petar, welcome to the show. Nice to speak with you, Adam. Lovely to be here. So, Petar, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So, we'll be talking about managing risk in cryptocurrency. And just to get us kicked off, um, I'll start this show like we start them all. So, Petar, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. So, that's our mission here. Petar, what mission matters to you? Um, I'm coming from Healy Consultants Group POC, and in our core, our firm assists international clients with global company and corporation services and providing holistic and tailored business solution to address clients' need in, as you can expect, developing markets across the globe. Our mission is to be consistent in supplying international corporate services and problem-solving support in a professional and ethical manner. We are proud because we are one of the few global corporate service providers that can proudly say that we supply the same quality of services when we manage engagements in traditional business hubs like Singapore and US, but also in emerging and complex countries with lots of red tape like Ethiopia, Brazil, Middle Eastern countries, Eastern Europe, and we are proud that we maintain a high level of professionalism in such diverse markets. And that's our driving force uh, for our business owner and for the team. That's awesome. Um, and I'll just start it off with the obvious, and I, I get this question quite often, is really, I mean, the world of crypto is expanding tremendously, lots of information out there, and it can be overwhelming for newcomers. How would you suggest, um, you know, people get into different types of cryptocurrencies? Like, where, where do you think they start? It's usually the case where clients come to us and they're already a sophisticated investor with track record and investment portfolio where they seek to place into reputable corporate structures across crypto-friendly locations. However, for newcomers, I would always suggest to follow the five sim simple steps to get into that mindset from scratch. And firstly, you should educate yourself by reading online from various respectable sources. And second, open a trading and investment wallet account with a recognized and well-regulated exchange. Then I would suggest to make the security of that account a top priority for any operation that involves really funds and investments. And I would recommend always to use a two-factor authentication in that case. For example, Google Authenticator. Any newcomer should look where they are based in the world. What is their regulatory and fiscal framework of their home country of residence, and especially tax residence? as several countries have restrictive policies in that regard that can affect your really starting up in the field and your long-term goals. 
And lastly, I would suggest for newcomers to begin by trading and investing in the most popular cryptocurrencies by market capitalization, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Binance Coin, and to follow the trends on the market uh, by watching the news, reading online. And this is usually a great way to get your feet into the program in a safe and organized manner. Investments in cryptocurrencies, while they are considered volatile, are a great way to diversify your own investment portfolio outside of traditional financial products, which can be sometimes really challenging to get into, and be also part, uh, to become part of a trend, which, as we can see, it's here to stay and only develop. So, um, and thank you, thank you for that. Um, and I think that's very helpful and very clear in terms of how, you know, how somebody would think about getting started. So let's, let's, um, maybe move on a bit. And I, I like to talk about something that you definitely specialize in over there and work, you know, day in and day out with. And that's really the, the regulation side of things and how, and getting through that, like the lack of comprehensive, um, regulations around cryptocurrency. I mean, it, it's just kind of given the stigma to where many people are kind of maybe a little, a little bit apprehensive, some people, about its adoption just overall. Um, what's your outlook on maybe the current or the future, um, you know, crypto regulations and why it's important going forward? Yes, Adam. So it's a fact of life that countries can vary greatly in their political systems and regulatory frameworks. You have, for example, common law countries, like for example, UK, Canada, Australia, and civil law countries like uh, European Union countries uh, headlined by Germany. And each of them regulates and distances themselves from the crypto scene differently. My firm and I remain optimistic that governments will slowly catch up to the crypto scene and provide a more sensible regulatory framework, a set of rules and regulations to capture and between us frankly exploit via taxation or cross-government services, the interest in growing market capitalization of the sector. It is true that operating in an unregulated sphere can be both rewarding for the investors, but also poses risks from, uh, for example, illegal financing perspective or AML. Mm. And, and that is risky for the society as a whole. It can crumble down as you watch what happens in the Middle East, for example. Mm. It will be a slow process, but flagship countries are already advancing their regulatory frameworks on the backbone of strong connections with the technology sector. And that's where the key is. You need to have a strong connection in dialogue with the technology sector if you're on the side of the government. In such countries, for example, Singapore, Estonia, and even offshore business hubs like the Cayman Islands are leading the trend in implementing sensible regulation in the sphere. And that's important. And I think the other countries will follow these trends in how you can manage uh, this side of the business and the investments in. What are some of the um, the obstacles people are facing in legitimizing specifically a corporate venture in the crypto space? Sure. Uh, the common challenges that at least I observe and our clients face in that field revolve around restrictive policies by traditional banks mm. and fiscal entities when they seek the investors to repatriate proceeds back into their home countries that, for example, they have derived over the course of the past years. Mm. We often see banks close corporate and personal bank accounts. They just give you 30 days to remove your funds that you have channeled through your um, investment wallet. And that revolves back to the topic of banks, compliance departments, not being able to catch up to the technology development of the past decade. They're still stuck in the past. Furthermore, clients are often challenged 
by their own local tax authorities, which struggle to find the proper way, the sensible way, to tax proceeds generated from international crypto investment operations. It's an often case where clients seek our guidance at Healy Consultants on how and where to set up a corporate structure abroad to firstly ensure long-term viable political stability, which differs in their home country, and to seek a fiscally organized corporate structure to house their international proceeds. And secondly, ensure the bank that they work with understands the legitimate flow of funds and proceeds derived from simple proprietary investment in this new sector. Majority of our clients, Adam, and the success stories that we had over the past four or five years in coming from the crypto scene revolve around similar cases. And I can give you an example just from this month. I have a client, uh, a sophisticated client based in the UK with strong 30 years of experience working in the banking sector uh, that is not simply not capable to manage his portfolio of investments because the UK banking sector does not want to house his proceeds in a safe and organized manner. So for them, uh, for this client, uh, we assisted him by registering um, a very safe and very legitimate corporate structure abroad. We we had a conference call with a crypto-friendly bank just last Friday. It was about a 30-minute call that we discussed the strengths and the challenges of this type of bank account and the long-term viability of the bank. And the client was all happy. And he's a very sophisticated guy. So a strong backbone bank is important for him. So that's really what the client needs to think about in order to face the obstacles in his home country. Wow, um, that that's quite a journey to uh, to get something done there, and uh, doesn't it does sound like <laughs> like it, it, it they're, it's not necessarily made easy as of this point, but you'd expect like many different things and different financial instruments over time. Like we hope um, it becomes more fluid and you know easier. I, I, the the one that the one like example I always like to um, like to bring out, and of course we're not there yet, and this has something to do with technology too. Is once upon a time, just even open a bank account, you had to walk in, right? You had to fill out all this paperwork, all this other stuff. Now you can do it right um, on the computer. And it's a little bit different and things change and regulations change. So I hope over time as, you know, technology, uh, I should say regulation in this case, because the technology is there, right? Um, um, I hope that, you know, the tech, the regulation and things make it more um, possible for people to, um, that want to participate in cryptocurrency in the field to um, have that opportunity to without all of the other, um, you know, hoops to jump through, so to speak. So Petard, um, overall, this has been an excellent um, conversation. You are obviously are an expert at what you're doing. If somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about Healy Consultants Group, um, what's the best way for them to follow up and to connect with you and your team? We're actually very well connected, Adam, at Healy Consultants. We're very active on social media. They can always come to us over on Facebook or Twitter or for our Asian clients, we recently implemented a WeChat option. So there are multiple communication channels um, available for our clients, and we cover most time zones across the globe. Uh, so they can always uh, touch base, and we'll brave the seas together in this uncertain crypto scene. We'll be happy to assist in that regard. Fantastic. Well, Batar, again, thank you for coming on the show today and sharing more about um, all the great stuff you're doing in the crypto space. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return listener and a return visitor. And uh, Batar, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for being a great host, Adam.